Hello, I'm at Oral Moor with David Gregg, who has both uh, directed and curated uh, next week's play, One Day in Spring, which is a piece which has been written by north of 15 writers, and we have two young Egyptian actors. David, tell us a bit about the play. Uh, well, really, it was the, an idea of trying to get a kind of portrait of a moment and a generation. Uh, the, the kids, basically, who because they are kids, who are sort of on the streets protesting and demanding change in all these different countries and in many cases risking their health and well-being. Um, and so we asked lots of writers, we just put out an invitation to do very, very short fragments of drama. Uh, all that we asked was that they have a place and time. And the idea was that they would add up to 24 hours in the Middle East. But in fact, what then happened was we got about 15 of those in that we, we, we were interested in using. And then we also had stories that people told us. Um, even during the season, uh, Abdullah and Abed would tell us, who, who did plays here earlier in the, in, the, in the season, told us stories about things that were going on, funny stories, stories about different protest chants, different uh, things that had happened. So over the last week or so, myself and the actors have been sort of knitting together all that material, the Facebook stuff, the little fragments of dramas and stories, into a kind of, the idea of it is a, is a sort of a tour of the Middle East um, with these two young youngsters telling us, uh, and, and they're, they're, they're taking us on this tour in order to show us how to be a revolutionary. So we can learn how to be a revolutionary in 24 easy lessons. That's really good. Um, we were fortunate in our casting. Unbelievably lucky that uh, we would. I needed translation for some of this material, and through a circuitous route involving Nicola McCartney spotting that she had a student who said, "I, I need some." She was a young Sarah was from, from Cairo, theatre studies graduate in Edinburgh, and she said, I need things to do. I'm, I'm sort of short of things to do. And Nick was, will you get in touch with David McClendon? and they're doing an Arab season. She got in touch offering to translate. And then very quickly, once we met her, I, I thought that she'd be perfect for the role. Uh, she had a friend, Safe, who was also a graduate in studying at RADA but who again, and like her until last year, was basically in Cairo as a student and totally involved in all of this stuff. So we cast them and with great luck and good fortune they've proved to be brilliant. And, 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 and they've, um, what's fantastic is in the rehearsal room, if you say, if you want to say, if you want to stage protest, right, mm -hmm. you say, well, what happened? How does it work? Then they, they can tell you literally. Yeah, they've been there doing exactly, it. yeah, they've been there doing it. So they know they know what it's like, and it's all, and therefore it's fascinating, and it has detail that there's no way I could have got simply from the writers that they bring to it. Detail and texture, and do you know the biggest thing that's come out of it for me is that I was thinking about the Wordsworth quote um, about the French Revolution, where he says, that "Bliss was it in that door to be alive, but to be young was very heaven." And that's what I hadn't realised until we started with these two young actors of this week that. Yes, it's terrible. Yes, the violence is frightening. Yes, there's all kinds of obstacles. But they are having the time of their lives. They're, they are reinventing their world. They, they are the ones in the driving seat, or at least they're trying to claim the driving seat. And that sense of energy, and, and, and I think of it as being almost like a punk, but that kind of, um, that, that sense of, raw, untrammeled energy is what I feel. Yeah. They are teaching me about everything that I've been given, all the material, and that's what we're trying to see. Yeah. So I think the show, which maybe I thought was going to be quite serious, it has ended up being something slightly different. It's, it's almost celebratory. I think. Yeah. It's, a, it's an extraordinary contrast. You and I sat together last week at the Tron Theatre and watched Leila mm -hmm. Solomon's piece, No Time for Art. Uh, which was the dark side yeah. of the revolution, the young people, all the young people who had been killed, yeah. whose names were read out. And uh, it, it, it's sometimes easy 
to lose sight of, of the excitement and the optimism yeah. and the positive uh, energy that comes from these revolutionary situations and the yeah. hope that the I young think, people also, carry. You know, I didn't really mean it to come out like this, but when, when we get in the play, they say, well, now you've learned how to be a revolution because they've taught us things like how you combat tear gas, that they've taught how do you, how do you um, use social networks. I mean, all hopefully in a humorous and interesting world. Yeah. But when they get to the end, they say, well, now we've taught you about revolution, so now you, what we need, we need you to have a revolution in Glasgow now. <laughs> and that, I found that, at first I had intended that that would be a joke, but as we were doing it in the read-through the other day, I suddenly thought, actually, there is a truth to this, that yeah. this, is, this is exciting, this is, a, this is a generation who's saying, this system is, is, is wrong and it's got to change. And I think there's something in that. I love the idea that instead of it being about us going, oh, what can we do to help? It's about them going, come on, what can we do to help you? You obviously, <laughs> you obviously need our yeah. spirit. And how can we give it to you? This one, uh, one day it's very next week, is, is the last of the six that um, you've created, you've made happen. Uh, I'd just love to know what your feeling is about the season, what, what we take away from it. And well, I, I, I mean, I think I'm, I'm not going to take, the, I'm not going to disallow yourself and Laura Moore for taking the credit for actually the boldness uh, and programming this and NTS for supporting. But yes, in terms of putting it together, the involvement I've had, what's, what's been brilliant for me, I think, has been uh, going on this journey. From, it, it feels like a, a really, uh, uh, like when you read a really good novel, like a good long novel, there are definitely bits in the middle where you can't believe you're ever going to get to the end of the novel and you can't remember when it began. <laughs> but, but at the end, you somehow, you, you have, it's almost like a deeper chord. It's not that you've learned anything in particular, but you just have a deeper empathy. And I think I really feel that, that I feel that from having watched all these plays, that there's just a third dimension now to my understanding of, of some of the situations that I see politically on television. But also I think there's something else that I take away from it, which is that the power of an audience, really the power of an audience, and I, I do, I re, I've said it a few times, but I reiterate this, I think the are of your audience and they're kind of, um, I think it's been brilliant the way they've sort of stuck with this season and the way that, that, that in a sense, by doing that, they've kind of um, given it meaning so that it does feel like a genuine, um, uh, uh, I suppose, communication, some sort of communication. Mm -hmm. that, uh, the, the, one small thing, like, uh, I don't know even if you know this, but uh, Mohammed, whose play was on the first, Mohammed Atta, played a, would you please look at the camera, that opened in Beirut uh, a week or so ago. Yeah. Uh, to huge controversy and success, but the people came to see it driving from Syria, because of course it was impossible to see it in Syria, they're driving across the border to see it in and, and that was something I thought, well, there you go, that was a, that's an Oranmore commission, yeah. that play existed here first, yeah. and it was exciting here, yeah. but it's brilliant to know that it's actually, as a result yeah. of its creation, it's actually gone back yeah. and, and spoken directly yeah. to its constituency. Yeah. And I think there's elements of that as well, that, that there will be elements from the season which which will keep reflecting and bouncing and we're not going to know really where, where or, or how yeah. they might end up landing. Um, it's also I interesting, I was talking to um, Abed, uh, the author of this week's play, and he was talking about the response he'd had from members of the audience here. Yes. Um, and he told me that he was approached by one of them who said to him, it, it reminded her tremendously of the bombing in Glasgow during yeah. the Second World War. Yeah. And, uh, um, but that's a brilliant, that, I think the thing I love about Abed's play is the, it is universal as yeah. well as particular. Yeah. It is, he, he's not hidden that it's set in Abed and North Korea, yeah. but at the same time you do feel it is two people under any sort of bombing. It could be Yugoslavia a few yes. years ago. You know, it, yes. it could be hard. Well, another young person said to him uh, that, that it, it brought to her mind the conflict between um, Protestants and Catholics in Glasgow. 
Right. The yeah. same sort of divide, same. sectarian divide. Yeah. Yeah. But isn't that, I mean, it's both of us, because it's a sad thing to think that it's so universal a theme, but, but it is a universal yes. theme. But I, I, I think, but, but Abba deals with it with such comic gusto, and which almost, which I love because it feels both Scottish and also, I know it's very Lebanese, that dark black comedy where you almost don't know if the person is serious or yes. if they're yes. taking a piss. Yes. And he manages to hit that. Yes so many times. Yes. Like, you know, I, I was laughing and I loved that the audience were laughing. And yeah. I think that's also, I mean, you, you can't sort of underestimate how much it means to a writer when your play travels across a culture. It's something yes. very special about yes. that. And well, you've had experience with that the other way. I have, yeah. And taking Damascus to yes, Damascus. Yes, well, that was even, yeah, that was an amazing moment as well. But the, there's something about those crossing border moments yeah. that you, you, you never, they always keep shaping your work as you go on. And so that's another thing as well. We don't quite know what work may come from this in other yeah. ways. That what I might go on to write, what I've done, I might go on to write, or yes. direct, or, you know, all of that stuff. But I mean, I, I, for me, I'm still now caught up. I'm too caught up in, the, in, a, in our show now yes. to, to, to be thinking. But the, I think there'll be a point when it comes to an end where uh, they'll be able to have a reflection on it. Yes. Uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, I do. I feel very, I feel very pleased to be able to achieve it. And I think the achieving of it was on the back of an audience who were prepared to, to go to and come on journey. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I, I really hope you will come and see one day in spring the last of the plays in the Arab season. Uh, I've been to a read through. I'm just going to a rehearsal. I found it funny, challenging, uh, informative. And uh, I think it, it's going to be an hour that you will regret if you don't spend it here. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you.